you know, pop side of them. And it was a blessing and a curse because you know, they were sure they were happy about getting signed first and they were on the Benjamins and the shit was going on. But then he made them jiggy and put them in suits and and made them, made them write lyrics for them and took all that publishing and wrote. Okay, I see what's really good. You're trying to eliminate the competition. Mm -hmm. You know, because at first you retire, mm -hmm. you know, you know, then get me off the label. Now you're back rapping again. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, I mean, it's all good. Y'all, we need to talk about how all the people who tried to expose Diddy and Jay-Z are either under the ground or they've been labeled crazy, and no one takes them seriously anymore. Well, the late great DMX was one of these people, and he allegedly tried to expose Diddy for f***ing out and mistreating his artist, and Jay-Z for being in cahoots with the Illuminati higher-ups. Meanwhile, Jaguar Wright recently did a new interview on Diddy and Jay-Z, and she said people don't even realize that Jay-Z is even worse than Diddy. And we have yet to hear about all the vile and disturbing things Mr. Sean Carter allegedly did to get to the top. You want to know what makes Diddy being publicly shamed like this so, so left? What's that? Sean Carter is worse. But did DMX really know all about Diddy and Jay-Z's evil ways? What exactly did he witness while working with these two? Let's get into it. A lot of the love I had for wanting to, you know, for wanting to be a part of the industry is not there anymore. I'm not, I'm not, I don't even associate myself with the industry. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an industry artist. I'm an artist in the industry. Y'all, the Diddy rabbit hole is getting more insane by the day, but he's not the only one getting exposed, and the spotlight is now also on his longtime buddy, Jay-Z. And reports recently surfaced that DMX was one of the first people in the industry who saw right through the both of them. An interview recently surfaced where DMX said Diddy was graping his artists. And while some folks think DMX was using that word as a metaphor for Diddy not paying his artists enough, others are convinced X meant exactly what he said. Uh, well, you know, the locks got signed by that. Even though I bought the locks to our riders, you know, they got signed. They were a safer group, you know, pop side of them. And it was a blessing and a curse because you know, they were sure they were happy about getting signed first and they were on the Benjamins and the shit was going. But then he made them jiggy and put them in suits and and made them made them write lyrics for them and took all that publishing and ran. like, damn. I'm glad I didn't, you know, like. You keep that, and we, and we went to like, soon as they got signed, you know, D was like, yo, if you like the locks, like, X is like, like, big dog, like, those are the pops, like, you, you luck. In another interview, DMX said Diddy first refused to sign him to Bad Boy because he thought he wasn't marketable enough. But when he saw the offer Def Jam laid on the table, Diddy begged him to stay with him. X said, he was like, I'll lace your pockets. I'll double what they gave you and lace your pockets. But DMX wasn't feeling Diddy's vibe. And that's allegedly because he got the word about some sinister things going on at Bad Boy behind closed doors. One fan even claimed that X spoke about how Diddy used to grape his artists, a especially Biggie, and everyone thought DMX was crazy. Again, maybe DMX was using the R word as a way of saying Diddy was taking all Biggie's money. But then again, after hearing all these recent allegations about Diddy, anything is possible. Now, as for DMX and Jay-Z, they had this whole tangled history. And though Jay showed respect publicly when X passed, folks are saying X never fully trusted Jay. DMX allegedly thought Jay was shady and never really wanted anyone else to rise up. X even said Jay messed with his six album because he was scared of the competition but jay never owned up to that move so right after dmx passed on april 19th 2021 jay showed up on lebron james's show the shop and lebron asked him about dmx's legacy jay remembered a time back in 99 when he boycotted the grammys because dmx didn't get a nod and he talked about how despite them being in the game together there was still this bond of love amid all that competition a little bit just about like what he meant to the culture and maybe meant to you personally by the way the first time i boycotted the grammys was for him we both came out that year. He didn't get nominated. He dropped two albums, had two number one albums in the year. same yeah, year. Same year. I remember that. Yeah. They didn't even nominate him. The I won that year, year for rap album. So my first Grammy win, I wasn't in. I wasn't even in the building because I boycotted the fam. So there was a there was a competitive thing, but it was big love.
he was so competitive with me. I never met a human being more competitive <laughs> with me, like ever, not even my big brother. But here's the thing, Jay conveniently left out he was the one playing that competitive game and supposedly messing with X's grind. Back in 2004, Jay took over as the big shot at Def Jam Records, and according to DMX, that's when things took a turn. DMX had been repping Def Jam for ages, dropping five chart-topping projects between 98 and 03. But when Jay-Z slid in as president, X spilled the tea that Jay tried to throw a wrench in his sixth studio album, Year of the Dog, again. Well, I said I had the crazy track record Def Jam, everything was good. You know, I go to do the sixth album, and you know, Jay-Z became president. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, when he first got the job, he hit me with the call like, yo, dog, it makes us run to the building like, yo, you good? Mm -hmm. Finish the album, shoot the video. What happened? Mm -hmm. Maybe on vacation and, you know, uh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you listen to a whole album, mm -hmm. pick a single, shoot a video, then don't know? According to X, this whole mess went down because Jay had a change of heart about retiring and wanted to clear the field before his big comeback. See, Jay flipped the script on retirement plans and suddenly he was eyeing that comeback spotlight. But before stepping back into the game, he aimed to eliminate any competition standing in his way, allegedly. And that's when things got really messy between him and X. Okay, I see what's really good. You're trying to eliminate the competition. Mm -hmm. You know, because at first you retire, mm -hmm. you know, you know, then get me off the label. Now you're back rapping again. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, I mean, it's all good. That's all good. This moment was when DMX clocked Jay's game. It was all about Jay's own moves. No care for anyone else if it didn't fit his plan. So X bounced from Def Jam and inked a deal with Columbia Records. But hold up. There's more to why DMX had serious doubts about trusting Jay. And it all ties into Jay's connections with the shady industry higher-ups who really call the shots. See, both Jay and DMX left a mark on the culture and music scene, but they moved very differently in the business game. Unlike Jay-Z, X always kept it real, calling out how those label owners grip artists tight, and he wasn't about to bend for him, not figuratively and not literally. They, they got they got this new, this new breeder rapper that's that's paying DJs to play their shit. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? They 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 they, they sucking the the, the uh, record label executives. And it's like they, they, there's too much of that going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let me be me. Let me be the artist that I am and just play my mother music. You know what I mean? Exactly. Now they want you all up under this. You know, sitting at the at the, going to dinner with them and. Shit like that and you know all that favor for a favor shit I don't get down like that look I give you the music you give my money that's it Jay-Z though he's been in those industry maneuvers right from the jump and over the years accusations have piled up about him turning his back on folks who were tight with him one of those folks is Rockefeller co-founder Dame Dash who went public saying Jay-Z was all buddy buddy with those big wigs in the music business and flipped on him back in 2021 Dame was looking to offload his shares in Rockefeller and he spilled the tea that Jay offered him a measly 1.5 million to buy his stake. Dame felt disrespected, like he was being lowballed. So in response, he and his crew tried to put Jay's debut album, Reasonable Doubt, up a sale as an NFT. When I was offered a certain amount of money for my interest in Reasonable, in um, Rockefeller Inc., which owns Reasonable Doubt, mm -hmm. they offered me like a million and a half dollars, Jay-Z. And I was like, that's some disrespectful shit. So I guess I had to sell it someplace else. And I was talking to uh, my, my cousin who knew this dude, Ron Sweeney, a lawyer, Ron Sweeney. And he, they were telling me it might be better to sell it as an NFT and all the things you could do with it. After that move, Rockefeller went ahead and filed a lawsuit, but Dame fired back, saying he wasn't trying to sell a slice of that project. I got the lawsuit because again, I got accused of doing something I did to stop me from doing it. And then everybody just went missing. <laughs> so I had to deal with the lawsuit on my own. I was like, that's fine. Dame peeped the game and saw how these corporate heads were trying to mess with the story. And even though they wrapped up that lawsuit in 2022, Dame wasn't done speaking up. He straight up called Jay out, saying Jay did him dirty for that cash. Dame was basically saying that those corporate big shots in the music business got into Jay's ear and convinced him to turn his back on their partnership. That's the algorithm. It wasn't surprising because that's what always happens, Dame said. They make one sell out the other. Their friend, divide and conquer. That's a normal story. But that's that's not all. Dame also started naming names, and one person he put on blast was Lear Cohen, a heavyweight in the music scene and Jay-Z's close friend. Lear and Jay have been tight for ages, and Jay even named Lear as his mentor. But word on the street is that Lear was to Jay-Z what Clive Davis was to Diddy, if you know what I mean. Now, rumor has it, allegedly, Diddy got on his knees 
for Clive Davis in 1994, and that's how Bad Boy Records came about. So that would make Clive Davis Diddy's mentor, right? And what they share in common is that both of their artists mysteriously end up unalive. Now, Lair has been tangled up in all sorts of drama over time, and Dame publicly accused him of deliberately using the divide and conquer method to get black artists and moguls to turn on each other. The crazy part is that when Lear popped up on The Breakfast Club in 2018, he went on about the opioid crisis and mentioned DMX, saying he was so sad about X's struggles with substances. But when Charlemagne threw that question at Lear about why he keeps backing artists pushing that drug culture despite knowing about the crisis, Lear straight up said that's just how the business rolls. One of the biggest artists you ever had was uh, had a real bad drug problem, DMX. I'm so sad. Um, DMX, um, 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 our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? Um, b because I, I, I already answered that question. You weren't paying attention. Um, she asked me talent or issues, and I said talent. But I, I, I have to, I, I can't give up on people. But I'm saying that's hypocritical, though. You're saying um, the it's opportunistic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got, I got people to feed. <laughs> um, oh, I got a, Lear. I got a, I got a business to run. Charlemagne then went on and brought up how Dame called Lear a culture vulture, and here's what Lear had to say about that. You're gonna make Dame Dash take this clip and call you a culture vulture. Who's Dame Dash? You brought him up. I don't even know him. I don't even know him. So you bring him his name up. I don't even know him. Charlemagne and Envy then reminded Lear what Dame did for the culture. But Lear once again acted like Dame didn't even exist. Come on, Lear. Don't do that to him. I don't know him. I really don't. So, um, I don't know what to tell you. I won't be complicit. And this right here, this kind of response is a whole lesson in and of itself about the kind of sway folks like Lear hold in the music scene. It really shows you the weight of their power in this game. Anyway, when Lear's words about Dame went viral, Dame hit back on Instagram saying, Lear basically just proved his whole point. Dame wrote, thanks for this, liar Cohen, for proving my point in the true culture vulture form. They make money off of us and then try to erase our true history and act like the real ones never existed. He pays his bills at the expense of us. The big question is why can't he sell any rock music? Why can't he eat with his own culture? Stop fronting on my people. Like you mean something. Your own culture laughs at you. Now you're probably wondering, where is the link between all this and DMX? Well, allegedly, Lear was the one who got Jay-Z to mess with X's sixth album. But here's where it gets even wilder. When DMX passed, Lear went on and said some straight up disrespectful stuff about him at his own funeral. DMX's send-off took place in Brooklyn on April 25th, 2021. And a bunch of big names from the industry were giving speeches. Lear was supposed to be there too, but he couldn't even bother to show up in person. Instead, he sent in a recording where he talked about how DMX was a good dude. But then out of nowhere, Leo dropped the bomb calling DMX a gremlin. So the race against time was that we all know X is a gremlin and reckless and looking for a wall um, to crash into. Um, X if you listen to X, if you see X, X, um, um, this is, his death is no surprise. Um, if you listen to and you watched who and what X was. No, for real. How are you going to label a man a gremlin at his own funeral? Now, we all know X had his battles with substance abuse, but showing up at a funeral and dropping those disrespectful bombs, well, once again, that shows you just how much power and control folks like Lear have. And if this is the guy Jay-Z looks up to as his mentor, then no wonder DMX never fully trusted Jay. Anyway, fans who are now looking at all this mess surrounding Diddy are saying it's only a matter of time before Jay-Z skeleton start falling out of his closet too. But let me know how you feel about all this. Did DMX know what Diddy was up to? And how much do you think Diddy and Jay-Z really have in common? Comment down below and then check out this next video.